Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Kate and today I will be going over some reading goals that I have set for myself going forward to kind of help keep my TBR uh, list a little more well-rounded and a little less focused on buddy reads, which have always been a constant temptation for me. Um, and so I'll kind of go over that and then I'll get into what I'm planning on reading for the month of August. So as far as my reading goals go, um, going forward, I am limiting myself to around five buddy reads. Uh, my total goal for the month is around 10 books. So at five, that should give me roughly half of my TBR for buddy reads. Um, it's been considerably more than that for the last couple months. So that's kind of what I'm looking at for that. I also have several new goals concerning um, thinning out some areas that I have kind of been skipping out on. So one of them is to read at least one nonfiction book every month. I'm a huge history nerd. Um, not that I know everything about it, just that I find it very interesting. So I am going to be trying to incorporate more nonfiction, particularly history, into my TBR so that I don't skip out on that because I'm so interested in the new fantasy and other genres. Um, the next on my list is to read one self-published book every month. I had participated in the India Accords Readathon in July uh, and only managed to read two out of the eight prompts. I really would like to start getting more self-published into my um, reading, so I'll uh, be, instead of just trying to fit it all into a readathon, I'm going to commit to reading at least one a month. The next one on my list is I subscribe to a website called Book Riot's um, recommendation list that they call my TBR. And basically every quarter you can either have them send you a list of three books uh, that they recommend to you based on other books that you've enjoyed, or you can have them actually send you the books. Uh, it's a really great service. I've really had a lot of fun with some of the things that they've recommended, which are things that I wouldn't necessarily have picked for myself, but it's been a good way to kind of stretch um, what I read and find some stuff that they recommend. But I've not been keeping up with that very well, so I'd like to really both catch up and then when I get the new list, um, make sure I respond to that. So read one of their recommendations every month. Um, I also am participating in the R Fantasy uh, on Reddit book bingo challenge. So I would like to, the nice thing for this one is that it should overlap pretty well with stuff I'm already reading, but I'd like to fill two criteria every month for that. And then I've watched some recent videos um, from other people on booktube that reminded me that I had not counted how many series I still have open since many of us are um, kind of trying to keep the number of series we're reading under control. Um, so I'm going to try, I am at 44 open series. That was a scary number to find out about, but oh well. Um, but basically I'm going to be reading at least one book in a series that I have open every month in order, I'm going to keep adding series, that's just a given. So at least this way I can kind of complete them as I add new ones and hopefully I'll never catch up completely, but keep it a little more under control than it is right now. So that's gonna, what my reading goals are per month going forward. Uh, now I'll get into what I'm planning on reading for the month of August. And my TBR for August is excessive. I normally, my goal is 10 books a month. I often end up somewhere between 8 to 10 per month. I have 13 on my uh, list for August and unfortunately I was not paying attention to how many buddy reads I had signed up for. So of my 13, nine of them are buddy reads. This is why I'm instituting my new goal of five per month. Um, they're all books I wanted to read so I couldn't bring myself to say no to any of them, uh, but in the future I will be exercising some more restraint. Um, so I'm going to go over these books based on the format I'm planning on reading them. 
So the first section is audiobooks that I'm planning on picking up in August. The first one is Eye of the World by Robert Jordan. Um, seminal fantasy series, um, epic fantasy. I've heard it compared to Lord of the Rings, which I finished earlier this year. It's giant, both in individual books and in the 14 of them in that series, which has always kept me from reading it. Luckily for me, one of the Discord groups that I'm in is planning on it for Buddy Read, that's in Gregory the Purchase channel. Um, I'll link him in the description. And so I'm finally going to get to this, uh, but via audio, because I've heard it's a little description heavy and I'm hoping that will kind of um, help me get through some of the slower parts, because I do tend to be more of a fan of fast-paced fantasy. Uh, the other audiobook that I'm planning on reading in August is Abhorson by Garth Nix. This is the third book in the Old Kingdom original trilogy. There are some other books in that series, but um, this will kind of wrap up that original trilogy, and then I can kind of decide from there. Um, my cat is eating in the background, so if you hear noises, that's what it is. Um, that'll wrap up that trilogy and then I can kind of decide if I want to continue to the others or shift to a new series and come circle back to it later. So Abhorson is picking up where Lyriel, which I finished in um, July, left off with some of those characters so I'll definitely um, be looking forward to finishing that. And then um, that is narrated by Tim Curry, who is an amazing narrator, this close to too over the top, but he's a lot of fun. So um, I'll finally wrap up that one, and I don't think he narrates any of the others, so I might switch to book after that, we'll see. Then the next section is books that I'm planning on doing some immersion reading, which is pairing the audiobook with the uh, actually physically reading it. Um, the first book that I have up for that is Senlin Ascends by Josiah Bancroft. This is a buddy read over in the Shelf Space Discord server. And um, it's one I've heard a lot about. I recently picked up the audiobook for this as well, so I'm really looking forward to starting this one. The basic premise for Senlin Ascends is basically that a a uh, kind of gentle scholar is visiting this Tower of Babel and loses his wife. So he's got to go through the tower um, with all kinds of dangerous things in it to find his wife uh, and leave. So that's Sunlin Ascends. The other book that I'm going to be doing immersion reading, I don't have a physical copy of it yet, I just have the ebook and the audiobook, is Son of a Lich by J. Zachary Pike. I read Orconomics in July and loved it. Uh, it's a satirical fantasy, basically uh, adventuring campaigns, kind of D&D style, have now become investment opportunities, and there's a group of, in Orconomics, there's a group of down-on-their-luck adventurers that kind of get roped into this quest um, for a mad goddess. I, it was a little slow-paced, but I really, really liked that one. Son of a Lich picks up basically where Orconomics left off, so I'm really looking forward to seeing what happens to our characters next. Um, so that one's going to be really high on my list to get to soon, just because I enjoyed Orconomics so much. And thankfully, uh, that will catch me up on that series. So at that point, I will, uh, if I finish Ebhorsen and Son of a Lich, I will have caught up on two series this month, which would be fantastic, because I'm starting like five of them. Um, so those are the two immersion reads. The next category I will talk about is books that I'm only planning on reading physically, and there's a list of them because, as you might guess, since I've only gone through four, there's uh, still nine more to go. Um, so... The first one I'll talk about is Adrian Tchaikovsky's Empire in Black and Gold. I picked this up partly because it's a buddy read over in the Library of Alexandria Discord server, which I will link below, um, and partly because I really enjoyed Guns of the Dawn by Tchaikovsky when I read it in June. 
So this is a fantasy series, I believe. It's called Shadows of the Apt. And I, all I know about it is that um, it's kind of epic fantasy and that there are different races who incorporate um, abilities based on insects. And that sounds like a very intriguing concept to me. If you want more info on Shadows of the Apt, I will go ahead and link an excellent overview of the series by Dominish. Um, so check his video out if you want more details on that. Lynn, along with many other people, I will be reading Dune by Frank Herbert. This is one of those classic sci-fi stories. I read it in high school more than 10 years ago and basically remember nothing. But with the new movie coming out, I'd like to kind of re-experience it. I've also read a lot more sci-fi than I had when I read this in high school. I think at that point, the only even kind of sci-fi thing I had read was Dragon Riders of Pern, which starts fantasy and then kind of has sci-fi elements in it. So um, it'll be interesting to read Dune now that I've got a bit more experience in sci-fi. I'm definitely looking forward to checking that out. And that's going to be over in the Shelf Space Readathon. If I enjoy that, I will probably um, join many of the other people in a reading the rest of the series. Um, one book per month following this. So we'll uh, see how it goes. The next buddy read on my list is Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. Um, I'm guessing many people are aware of the Shadow and Bone TV show on Netflix that incorporates both from the Grishaverse original trilogy. Uh, I read the first one and wasn't a huge fan, so I'm not really planning on finishing that. Uh, but it also incorporates stuff from Six of Crows, which is kind of more of a... As far as I understand it, it's kind of this gritty found family story featuring a bunch of thieves known as the Crows and they kind of have to pull off this crazy heist that no one thinks they'll be able to manage. Um, it sounds really fun. I had meant to read this actually in June but never got around to it. So um, I, in Michael Nip's Discord server this was kind of like an extra buddy read that I couldn't resist. So um, that's the group I'll be reading this one with. Then I have Bone Shard Daughter by Andrea Stewart, and this one I had heard a lot about, and then um, the channel Jade uh, Bedtime Bookworm, I believe is her channel, I'll fix it if I did that incorrectly, um, but there's a number of us who are on the Patreon for her channel, and this is the pick for this month. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to reading it with the group and discussing it with them, so uh, it should be a good one. It's a fantasy, and the most I know about it is that it involves bone magic. Um, I think there's an animal companion and a couple different points of view, but one of the main ones is the um, daughter of an emperor who's lost her memory, and in order to succeed uh, her father on the throne, she has to recover that memory. Um, so that's kind of the most that I know about it, but it sounded like an interesting magic system um, and characters, so I'm definitely looking forward to this one. Then I have another sci-fi, which is Velocity Weapon by Megan O'Keefe. This one sounds like it's going to be a space opera, where one of the main characters is... Um, a fighter pilot whose ship crashes while she's in the middle of fighting a war and then she wakes up several hundred years later the war has been lost and she kind of has to figure out where to go from there she ends up on the ship of sounds like an AI that might have been on the other side um, so it should be really interesting sci-fi is pretty hit or miss for me but I do tend to like space opera so I'm hoping I'll enjoy it this one is a buddy read that I'll be doing over on the Shelf Space Discord server. Then, my extremely, oh, and uh, Bone Shard Daughter is actually going to count for one of the R Fantasy criteria. Um, the category is Debut Author. I don't remember exactly what the wording is on that, so I'll put it on the screen here. Um, but that one will fit hard mode for that category, 
which is to read a book from an author um, who has done an AMA on Reddit before, so that should be perfect for that. The next one I have also fits our fantasy criteria. Uh, it fits Lion Squasher, which is a book that's uh, 800 pages or more. <laughs> that is The Stand, which is, I think my copy is uh, 1400 pages long, and I don't think there's any that are below a thousand. So this should fit just fine for that. I have already marked all of the sections so I can hopefully keep up with it. Um, I've read a couple other Stephen King books and really enjoyed them. I read It and The Shining and then the sequel to The Shining, Dr. Sleep. Um, so I'm definitely looking forward to checking out The Stand because I've heard a lot about it. The impetus for this was it was kind of like an extra um, like side buddy read for the Jay's Bedtime Bookworms channel because um, a bunch of us were interested in checking that out. So I'm glad I'll have a group to read this with because I feel like this is going to be a bit of a project for me. So it should be interesting. And I actually have another Stephen King book on my TBR which is coming out in August, I believe on August 3rd, and that is Billy Summers. Um, as far as I... oh. Uh, I forgot to mention the story of The Stand, which is a post-apocalyptic thriller. There's a pandemic that kills most of the population, and it's the remaining ones kind of trying to figure out um, how they're going to handle uh, the new future, basically. So, uh, so that's the description for The Stand. Anyway, Billy Summers is a thriller. I haven't read a thriller from King before. I know he has Mr. Mercedes... Um, and a couple others, which I think are also thrillers, but this will be uh, the first one of his that I've read, and it's his newest, so I'm curious to check it out. That one will also be a buddy read over on Shelf Space. So, um, definitely looking forward to checking that one out. The plot, as far as I know, is basically that there's this assassin who's trying to do one last job, but ends up getting dragged into the orbit of this really evil person, and it's kind of about him um, trying to complete his one last job and uh, dealing with this person. So, as far as I understand it, that's the story for Billy Summers. Um, then my Book Riot um, recommendation is going to be Dial A for Anties by Jesse Q. Sutanto. This one, I guess, is probably counts as a cozy mystery. It's basically um, this young woman goes on a blind date and accidentally kills her date um, and has to enlist her mother and auntie's help in hiding the body. Hijinks ensue. I've heard it's kind of crazy and absurd but super funny. So I have no problem with absurd and I'm very much looking forward to finally checking this one out. Um, so definitely... Definitely looking forward to that one. It'll be a nice break from all my epic fantasy. Then, my nonfiction pick for this month. Um, I had uh, been to Stonehenge a couple times, but there was recently an exhibit uh, at a local museum where I live, and um, that uh, the person who curated that wonderful exhibit uh, wrote this book, which is Stonehenge, A New Understanding by Mike Parker Pearson. Um, I actually spent several hours at the exhibit just watching all the videos and checking everything out, but I'm really excited to get more information even than I saw there. So I'm really looking forward to this, and thankfully it's a relatively short history book, so hopefully I can squeeze it in. So that's that one. And so that is my list of books that I'm planning on reading in August. Um, I said my average books that I manage to read per month is usually around 8 or 9. I think the most I've ever read was 12 in June for the Olympics Readathon, after which I read 4 in July. So fingers crossed I managed to make it through all of these books, but I'm really excited about all of them. Um, and hopefully I've planned out... Uh, when I'm planning on reading these, so hopefully I'll be able to keep up with it. Uh, but I will definitely let everybody know how I'm feeling about them in my weekly updates, 
which I will attempt to be more consistent than I was in July. Um, but I will see you guys next time.